Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Coxie, wake up. Coxie, yeah. Coxie, wake up. Yep, 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 sorry. Wait, oh, no. Geez, what were you doing? Sleeping oh. on the job there. I am. Just because we're talking about tax today. Yeah, it's not my favourite <laughs> subject. It's boring. That's, I reckon that's one of the worst skits we've ever done. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It was I'll very read. authentic. <laughs> Our listeners are just rolling their eyes thinking, yeah. oh, here they go again. Idiots. Do you snore? <laughs> Apparently sometimes. I'm oh. going to be really honest. I'll out myself. Not very often, but occasionally when I'm really tired, I do. Yeah, I snore when I lie on my back. Same. And I usually get an elbow in the ribs. <laughs> Poor Adam. He's just covered in elbow masks. Poor bugger. <laughs> anyway, today has the potential to be a bit snore worthy. If, if you're listening to this, you've at least made it past the title it's of the episode. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, so, you know, I could have put something in there that's like, you know, Coxie and Woz talk about baby goats and unicorns. And that might have been a way to get you to listen to this, but... That'd go viral. We were honest. We were honest. We said it was about the black economy. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we need sound effects. <laughs> I have fun. I should put it in there. You'll have to. Um, so, we're talking about the black economy today. And uh, it's not, you know, making your own beer at home and selling it to your mates. It is this whole thing of cashies. What's wrong with a cashie? Everyone loves a cashie. What's wrong with a cashie? I don't know too many tradies that haven't done... A fair amount of cashies in their time. It's just a standard, or it used to be a very standard part of being a tradie. Yeah, and some of it I have observed is so their wives don't know how much money <laughs> they're making, <laughs> so they can go pay for the new jet ski or oh, that's the, hilarious. the exhaust upgrade on the Hilux or something. Um, but then the wife's missing out on the new pair of shoes or the, the new handbag. This is very sexist. I think that's the idea, Coxie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, there's no money in the account, love. No, sorry, dear. How'd you pay for the jet ski? Oh, Got it off a friend. Yeah, my <laughs> mate sold it to me cheap. Um, but a lot of it is just about this um, fairly strong dislike of the tax office and paying taxes and the bloody government taking money out of our bank account all the time mm. and sticking their fingers in my wallet and... I must admit, I've I've complained about taxes over the years mm-hmm. too. Likewise, uh, I've I've felt a little bit hard done by, and like it's unfair. Um, even the bird outside the window at the moment is not very happy about. <laughs> it. That's because it's forty degrees here in Brisbane, uh, and it's fairly warm. But um, dodging taxes, which is essentially what we're doing when we do cashies, uh, costs Australians. Is it fifty billion dollars? Yes. yes, it is. Is that is. the number that he said? Yes, it is. That that fifty just billion dollars blows my mind. Um, now I knew it was a problem, and I know it costs the government, which really means it costs us money, Correct. right? Um, so you know that's money that's not available for hospitals or schools or roads or police or border protection or the Bradfield scheme, as I joked about in the episode, <laughs> just um, for added controversy. Yeah, yeah, in the, in the middle of one of Australia's worst droughts. So, uh, but it costs the country tens of billions of dollars when you say, oh, mate, I'll do it. I'll do it a bit less for cash. And you stick that cash in your wallet mm. and you don't pay GST on it. You don't pay income tax on it. Mm. Um, that's, that's really shit, actually. And I think every other listener just turned off. Because <laughs> they're like, cashies? I don't know, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> but on, honestly, I think we've always all been in that situation where we have lost out on a job because the cowboy around the corner is doing the job cheaper, right? Well, that's the exact same thing we're talking about here. Mm. And and that's um, way more prevalent than I guess we realise. Um, now, most people do the right thing, but I'm sure listening to this, you've come up against some person who has done it less for cash and mm. you've lost the job. Mm. So that's the income you didn't make for your family. You do the right thing. You have a bookkeeper, all those sorts of things. And this, this other mongrel has actually undercut you because they're acting illegally. They're a cowboy. Mm. Um, so, 
yeah, just think about that next time you do a cashy. Um, we interview Marcus Chu from the ATO today. So he's one of the bigwigs at the ATO. He's a director. We're, uh, well, he's not the director. No, I know. <laughs> but that's very funny. I, I like how he corrected me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would have let it slide if I was Marcus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's an image I'm happy to wear. But um, he's a bit of a cool dude and um, he loves numbers. And yeah, he, he just made it nice and simple for us. Mm-hmm. Um, this whole reporting system that they're putting in place. So, basically, computers mean that they're going to catch you. Yeah. So, you might as well just do the right thing. <laughs> so, listen to this to figure out how to do it right. Yeah. So, Marcus takes you through what you need to do to make sure you do the right thing, um, that you report everything properly, and then there's nothing to worry about. We can all have new hospitals. Yay. <laughs> For our drinking habits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So, joining us today... At the Traders in Business podcast is Mr. Marcus Chu. Now, I hope I get this right, Marcus, the Director of Small Business at the Australian Tax Office or Taxation Office. Uh, yep, I'm, I'm one of the directors in, in small business. <laughs> I, look after, <laughs> I look after the uh, tax and payments reporting system, otherwise known as TPOs. Yep. I would like to be the only director, but that was, that's a different <laughs> topic, isn't it? <laughs> That'd be a much bigger pay packet, I'm guessing, mate. <laughs> Now, Marcus, you're here to talk about tax, which I know our listeners love talking about tax, and I'm sure they're really excited to hear from you about the taxable payments reporting system. First of all, I'd actually like to put a bit of a face to the name, not not so much uh, physically because you can't do that on a podcast, but Marcus, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How on earth do you end up working at the tax office? Good question. Uh, Like a lot of people, I think uh, coming out of uni, uh, I kind of um, put a lot of different resumes through and um, I was really interested in joining a large organisation as part of a graduate program and that was uh, 20 years or so ago and um, I thought I'd I'd give the organisation a a shot. Um, I think I was drawn to the fact that um, a lot of the work we do that people don't really see that um, it's to better the community and society in Australia. So that kind of drew me a little bit to, to see what I can I uh, contribute. And, um, yeah, from then, just um, a big organisation with a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different work. So, you know, it's a lot of, like, little different businesses within one big one. So, yeah, that's why I've been around for – I feel ancient now. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, what sort of qualifications do you have? Uh, I have an economics degree, honours in economics mm-hmm. uh, from Latrobe. La Shout out to all the people from Latrobe. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, obviously done the uh, other uh, postgraduate sort of courses. Sure. And, um, you know, internal training, yeah. Okay, so, and you've been with the ATO for 20 years. Yeah, about there, give or take. It's like when you get a little bit older, you kind of cut down on the number <laughs> of years that you quote. Yeah. It's like a woman having a baby. You forget how painful it is. <laughs> is that painful? No, of course not. <laughs> You've forgotten. Neither's working in You've the forgotten. same place for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Marcus, you would have seen some changes uh, there at the ATO, not so much, I guess, organisationally, but um, in terms of, you know, tax law and stuff, how, how do you deal with all the changes and the new legislation and all the changes of government in that time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenging environment, but I guess it's one of those things where, um, it keeps us like on the ball, so to speak. I guess the, the more that you know that things aren't going to be stagnant and then you've got to uh, continue to grow, evolve uh, and learn from, from your past experiences, I think that kind of prepares you for all the things that come up. If you kind of stay stagnant and uh, aren't, aren't expecting things to happen, that's probably where you, you kind of let down your guard. But we're constantly evolving, trying to, to provide the community uh, a, a better service uh, you know, and at its core, in essence, we, we are a service provider. Um, mm. So we're trying to make sure that we, we do the best for Australian society. Yeah, cool. So what does one of the directors, not the director of a small business <laughs> at the ATO actually do, mate? What's, what's your responsibility there? Uh, so, I, because I look after the taxable payments reporting system, um, I have a broader role in terms of administrating the system. So, I work across the organisation in, in the different parts that we have. Like, we have uh, a law part that helps develop the law, interpret the law. Uh, we work, um, my area as well, works closely with people providing the scripts for when you call the call centre, uh, as well as uh, outbound correspondence. So, it's really end to end. A bit of um, TPRS is a bit of like a microcosm of the tax office little aspects of everything that we do. Um, but collectively, you know, we, we get that um, quality outcome 
but everyone plays a, plays a little bit part of that so there'll be directors in all the different areas that we interact with as well as um, ones that uh, strictly do things around Black Economy Task Force um, and, and uh, numerous uh, other things that uh, people uh, have responsibilities for an organisation. Mm. This is slightly blowing my mind. I, you know, I'm a, <laughs> a tradie wife and talking to you today about the differences in business and the way yours is structured, obviously a massive organisation. It's just so different to, I think, most tradies would know or understand a business to be run. So many different levels. It's really quite interesting. Yeah, and there's, there's, that's a really good point, and, you know, um, and vice versa as well. So it's really important for us as an organisation to really speak to people in different industries because we have to understand, like, you know, the whole cliche about walk uh, in your shoes, yes, uh, not, not just in ours. So that's a big emphasis of our organisation as well. How do you go about getting that knowledge, Marcus? That, that must be tricky for you guys. Yeah, I think it's um, probably uh, cultural and, and mindset in terms of like if you make that the most important thing, mm-hmm. um, then it, it is something that you don't have to think about, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yep. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's been uh, something that we've been focused on for a, no- a number of years now and it is, it's continually evolving and we do the best we can in terms of working um, with our clients, you know, taxpayers, etc. Mm-hmm. Not not necessarily just being the heavy hand, mm. although sometimes it's necessary. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit like uh, speeding fines, isn't it? We, we all have to complain about them, but if you don't speed, you don't actually pay the fine. So <laughs> I know we have to pay taxes if we don't speed. Anyway, that didn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's just uh, you know if, if we follow the law and if we do what we're supposed to do, then. Really, there's no issue. It's just an accepted part of doing business and, and being a member of society. You know, it's we don't swap cows anymore. So there's got to be some way to pay for the roads and the hospitals and um, the people who can't take care of themselves. So it's a it's a touchy subject for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Australians, it's a national sport, hating the ATO. Uh, <laughs> but, that's right. But uh, hopefully... Uh, you know, we, we're not going to disclose your home address or anything, Marcus, so don't worry, mate. <laughs> we, won't, we won't have angry mobs of tradies turning up on your door or anything like that. <laughs> I was just going to quote your address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, all, they already know where <laughs> I live, mate. <laughs> I was only complaining the other day about how many people approach me for free advice. All the time people are asking me for advice that I should be paid for. It's part of my job. And so it's a real dinner party party conversation for me to turn up and they say oh what do you do oh I'm an interior decorator and I do x y and z and they'll ask me for all this free advice I imagine that when you go to a barbecue Marcus and you let them know that you work with the ATO that's probably the end of the conversation is it <laughs> well yeah I get both uh you know, people back away I uh, go grab a beer <laughs> or something like that but um but then other other people will assume that you know everything yes. and uh, when you kind of go uh it's a big organization I'm Apologies, but I'm not across that. They kind of look like, oh, and you're working for the ATO? So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. How come you don't know that? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite humorous, actually. It's, it's pretty funny. Absolutely. So, Marcus, uh, we're, we're talking specifically today about uh, the TPRS or the Taxable Payments Reporting System. Uh, a bit of a mouthful. What on earth is that? So it's um, what we call, and apologies is a bit of a, a technical term, and I'll try to break it down a little bit more, but it's, it's essentially a third-party reporting regime. So what that means is that we use information that businesses who use contractors provide us to make sure that the contractors are actually doing the right thing. So in 2012, uh, the building and construction industry was identified as an industry that had a lot of black economy activity happening in it, things like cash in hand, mm-hmm. uh, not, people not lodging their tax returns and things like that. So what this regime was brought in to do was put an emphasis on businesses who use contractors to provide a building construction service to um, report what payments they made to that contractor. Mm -hmm. And what we do when we get that information, we we have uh, sophisticated data matching techniques with all the other data that we hold. And just to make sure people actually um, disclosing the right amount of income that they're earning, they're actually lodging, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually thought that the system was in place. I was just saying to Warwick before we came on air, actually, this is something we've been doing in our building business for, I guess, probably four or five years. Is this only, or is it a different version of what we've been doing or is it a a new system that's being put in place? Can you tell us a bit more about that, Marcus? 
Yeah, so um, what, what happened was uh, in 2017, the black economy, there was a government had a black economy task force. Mm-hmm. And part of the recommendations, there's a whole suite of recommendations uh, to make sure that the system's operating correctly. And TPRS is one of those mechanisms to, um, that they found was very, um, very good at mitigating non-compliance or um, bringing money back into the system mm-hmm. uh, to help you know, build roads and hospitals alike. So what they uh, decided or the recommendations was to expand TPRS beyond building construction industry. So the, there were two tranches to it. The first uh, tranche was to focusing on couriers and cleaners. Mm-hmm. So as at the uh, 1st of July uh, uh, 2018, uh, couriers and cleaners had to start recording uh, payments uh, businesses recording payments that they paid to the contractors mm-hmm. and they've just be, uh, finished their first lodgement cycle. And then the next tranche was to uh, the security, IT and road freight industries. Mm-hmm. So the commonality with uh, all these industries are through different um, pieces of work within the within government, we found that those are the industries where contractors operate, that there is black economy activity. So the whole idea is to kind of focus on those industries and, and bring in the information that will help uh, improve the, the, the overall um, compliance attitude to, to tax in those industries mm-hmm. for contractors. And, and by black economy, we're talking, you know, cash money where it's not recorded as income. There's no GST collected or remitted on that money. So, you know, really they're dodging their tax obligations that's right. You know, people um, reporting uh, one hundred dollars when they got paid five hundred, uh, uh, not lodging the tax returns, not actually being in the system. So you know that, those kind of things. When you look at it at, at an individual perspective, um, people kind of um, feel, well, you know, people don't like the tax. Why am I working so hard and paying the tax? Yeah, yeah. But when you think about it more broadly, there's broader impacts. You know, not only the standard thing around um, where do we get the roads from, social security, um, hospitals. Um, schooling, but also the other impact is that the, that other these businesses and these individuals have a competitive advantage against others in the industry because they don't have to pay GST and tax, so they can probably offer their services at a cheaper rate. Mm. That yeah. means other people legitimately lose that business. Mm. It's it's an excellent point, Marcus, and it's something that we hear from our listeners a lot is. You know, how do they compete with the cowboys, quote unquote? And so often they are those people that are doing it for less for cash, you know, or oh, you just, I'll just put five grand on the invoice, but, uh, you know, you give me seven. Um, and, you know, they just can't compete with that because, you know, our listeners, generally speaking, are trying to run proper businesses. They're, you know, meeting their obligations. They're doing the right thing. And like you say, it's just you can't compete with that. Yeah, exactly right. Um Apologies, guys. You guys are lagging again. No, that's okay. We uh, maybe, maybe we should get someone from Telstra on the uh, the <laughs> podcast in the future, or, or the NBN. We'll get the NBN on the podcast. That'd be interesting. There's a can of worms. Don't even start me on NBN. <laughs> how how hard does that make your job when the okay. internet plays up, Marcus? Uh, yeah, quite hard, especially when I'm trying to do podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> we feel the same way, mate. Absolutely. So what, what do our listeners need to educate themselves about? And, and I guess, you know, there's an assumption that everybody that's listening to this is doing the right thing, but maybe there's a couple of people out there that, you know, can anonymously hear this and think, ooh, well, I might be doing a bit of that and contributing to the black economy. Um, what's some things they should be aware of, Marcus? Uh, I, I think um, you raise a really good point. A majority, in our perspective, is majority of people in society do the right thing. You know, there's a, a small percentage that don't, and some of those that don't um, don't know that they're actually doing the wrong thing. Mm. Uh, in regards to TPRS, um, what I recommend your, your listeners to do is that we focus quite heavily on our web content. So we try to provide as much assistance we can on the web content, and um, we, we're always looking at that to improve. Um, w- what information we can provide on that. So I guess the first point of call I would recommend to your, to your listeners would be go and visit ato.gov.au um, backslash TPA, which is the Taxable Payments Annual Report um, focus. So you can find a lot of information there. The other things I would say is that um, with TPRS, it's going to sound funny actually, um, well, actually not for you guys because you've been in industry. The thing that I found that makes people 
in the best position to comply is good record keeping. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you keep good records, basically make sure that you're having a functioning uh, business, Mm. that the actual reporting shouldn't be too difficult. Um, And a sort of a a sub part to that too is that when you're dealing with uh, contractors as a business, if you're contracting people, you know, it pays to, you know, do your own governance and make sure that is the ABN right? Do you have to renew, like, renew the information that you have on ABN? Some people don't. Some people may change the ABN for whatever reason, and you're using the old one. So it's really about, you know, bad information in, bad information out for us. Mm. So making sure that you know you know who you're dealing with, and you've got the right information. Uh, the the issue around that um, good record keeping as well is that we've uh, recently introduced um, a digital option for for people to actually lodge their taxable payments and your report. What we found is people in the building construction industry, a lot of people were still lodging via paper. So what we were, what we did was we built a um, an option now in MyGov um, or the business portal to to go in and lodge it through in a digital form. So if you go MyGov and you can lodge your income tax return, you can also lodge your TPAR in there now. And then obviously, if you're using business software that has TPAR compatibility, continue using that. And if you um, need, if you use a tax professional, again, speak to your tax professional uh, and use their service if that's sort of your your normal operation. Mm. It's it really plays into something that Nicole and I bang on about a lot on the show, and and you know, working with the tradies that we work with at various levels in the trade desk and the drawing board, of making sure that, as you say, good record keeping, but also, you know, you you're better off leaving a lot of this stuff to people who are professionals and do this as a job you know get a bookkeeper Mm. outside of your business if you're not big enough um pay a bookkeeper you know have a good accountant a good tax advisor um because generally speaking they'll be across a lot of this stuff and you know even if you ask them about it they're going to be able to find out about it easily they know where to look and they know how to put it all together and make sure it happens without a lot of headaches so it just to me it makes sense to outsource all of that stuff and not try and muck around and do this themselves. Just stick to what yeah, they absolutely. know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what, what we find when we interact with a lot of um, taxpayers and clients is that uh, small businesses are trying their best just to stay afloat, mm. focusing on their business. How do I get, you know, profit, the income? Uh, so the, the byproduct of all that in terms of their reporting obligations, um, be it in the industry obligations or, or tax, um, it's something like you're saying, you know, maybe a look at whether you need assistance. And, you know, it's, it's a good thing, not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, it is. Assistance is always a good thing. It never hurts to put up your hand and say, look, I need some help with this. And who wants to be doing the book work anyway? I'm sorry, it's boring. <laughs> some people really like it, but most tradies don't. It's not their forte. The other thing that we talk about a lot is making sure that you have an accounting system. I- we have so many tradies that are just still doing their checks and balances on a paper ledger rather than mm. putting it into some sort of accounting system. It, it's Having an accounting system makes this really easy. This report is very easy to generate. It's very easy to lodge. It's made easy for us by the services that we can have in our business. Stop doing it on paper. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's a great point because, you know, a lot of the things that we do in the tax office as well is to work with partners like the digital service providers who make this software and tax professionals where we want to make it like a seamless sort of environment mm. where everyone's talking to each other as best as we can. Well, obviously, you know, there's things that we can continue to improve, but, you know, that, that's the ideal scenario, that it's one system, everyone working uh, together. I know it sounds uh, a little bit interesting to some that we're actually talking that way, but, you know, it, it's the truth. We're, mm. we're actually trying to make life easy for everyone involved, including ourselves. So it's, it's a good uh, option. I think it's pretty typical for Australians and tradies, if I were to really generalise, to just roll their eyes every time there's a new thing they have to do. But I don't think that we stop to pause and look at what the benefits for us and our business are. A, it's not hard to do. It's actually really easy, particularly if you're a good record keeper. And B, it's stopping what is impacting so many businesses in terms of that cash sale down the road, doing it for 500 bucks cheaper than you can do it. Of course, the consumer is going to take the cheaper sale if they can yeah, and, and everything else looks comparable. So rather than roll our eyes at these things, sometimes we just need to step in and embrace what's there in front of us. 
And if you look at for TPRS, what we actually ask people to do, it's actually should be part and parcel of your normal day in terms of the invoices that you get. What is the ABN, the name, the you know, GST paid, uh, the amount that you pay them? Mm-hmm. They're very basic things. So it's nothing that we're asking people to go above and beyond. And you, know, you mentioned the, about uh, what the impact is. I've got some numbers here that I might read out is that the black economy, you know, when we think about it from an individual perspective, someone just maybe cash in hand $200. But as a whole, the black economy is estimated to be costing the community as much as $50 billion. Holy you know, Including moly. like $8.5 billion in cash payments, you know, 10 to $20 billion in understated uh, income. And, you know, I could, I could go on. Uh, so, like, if you look at it from a macro perspective as a, as a society, as a community, people maybe hopefully are starting to see why the focus and mm. you know, what role everyone plays in that. We could probably build the Bradfield scheme up in Queensland <laughs> and uh, drought-proof Australia with some of that money, Marcus? How much controversy do you want to throw into one episode? <laughs> Holy moly. But it's like, I guess I have bought into over the years the, you know, ah, oh, tax and hate paying tax and all that sort of stuff. But I have, you know, I've been working with people around finances and everything for probably 20 years now. And and this is not to get brownie points from you, Marcus, so that you know I'm a good boy. But um, I always say to people, it's like, just do the right thing. Yeah. You know, you, you're stealing from society here in Australia and you can't complain about a lack of, you know, oh, the government needs to do something about this. It's like, where do you think they're going to get the money from mm. for that? It comes from taxes. It's It's society taking care of ourselves and... The other side of it is I just think it's it's really crap behaviour and it's so unfair that some of us end up carrying that tax burden because we do the right thing and we mm-hmm. have good records and we you know re- we report all of our income and then there's other people out there doing cashies so you know if you're listening to this and you're doing cashies I'm talking to you you you're making it harder for the rest of us and that's mm-hmm. really crap It's not Australian to rip off your mate Yeah it's un-Australian to not pay tax there you go mm-hmm. <laughs> There you are. We're yeah. calling the big ones today. <laughs> yeah, it's it's and it's a great discussion because you know um, a lot of times people look at it from the perspective of um, the direct impact on them, like oh, why are they coming after me? No, no one's targeting you, so to speak. Mm. Yeah, so you know we have organisation of twenty thousand people trying to um, you know, look after you know, what is it twenty five thirty million people in, in Australia. So there's got to be a balance. Yeah. Um, you know that that. Some in some um, point in time, maybe maybe you're you're doing a lot more for society than others, but mm. you know it all balances out in terms of overall contribution. You know, yeah. Some people do need help through social security, and and this is sort of the the, the broader picture of things. So yeah. it's really good sometimes to just have a have a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Now I love numbers, Marcus, and I I don't know if you've got any more there. Like that fifty billion is a frightening figure. Do you have any other stats or, or numbers there just to give people a sense of, of what we're dealing with here? So you're talking to an economist by trade. So <laughs> well, so. uh, but I think one really interesting one to, to share is uh, through the building and construction, um, the TPRS regime that, that was focused on, on building construction, we did an analysis and found that um, over the four-year period from its uh, first introduction that we protected um, – Revenue in just the 16 year of 2.7 billion. So what that means is that in that particular year, just by um, people doing the right thing and sort of you know it's the whole digital disruption model instead mm. of incremental, people understood okay it's a whole new law and I have to comply now. That uplift factor contributed 2.7 billion dollars <sighs> to the economy or to to the government that they can use for other essential yeah. services. Yep. So that kind of starts. You, know, you can start to see the impact of of uh, a large number of people doing the right thing. Mm. I'm interested to know, because that number is huge and frightening, I'm interested to know when you find somebody's doing the wrong thing. So let's say Joe Bob the Builder um, has used Tom Collins Roofing Services and Tom Collins Roofing Services has not uh, told the ATO that they were paid that invoice amount from Joe Bob the Builder. What actually happens then? How how do you rectify that situation? Yeah, so there, there, there's a number of things that we do. Once we get the information in, uh, because we have information on uh, people's uh, income tax returns, we match what has been reported that they've been paid to what they're actually um, telling us 
that their, their income is for the year. Mm-hmm. So when there is mismatches and we think that um, you, you're probably understating, then you know, there may be some action taken on you. Um, the other thing that we found is that there's a lot of work. Uh, we have a lot of work where we find that people get um, through TPRS, we see that businesses are paying uh, individuals or, or, or businesses or sole traders to do the uh, a job, but these in, in these sole businesses aren't actually lodging a tax return. <laughs> yep. So that you know that 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 tells us um, you know it's a good indicator that it's something that we need to look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 and it, and it is all that. Uh, data matching where you know if i'm a builder and i paid a brickie to do to to you know do a house for me and he's not putting in a tax return uh it's like hang on a second warwick said he paid this bricklayer but the bricklayer is not reporting an income so someone's telling porky pies here <laughs> yeah and and it's in, and you know if, if you look at it from the perspective of a contract it's important for businesses as well to make sure that they're reporting the right amount or at the right information that you're, pay, uh, you're paying the contractor because mm-hmm. it does have a, a reverse impact on the contractor themselves as well. Yeah, okay. Can you explain that a little more for us, Marcus? So as an example, if um, you, you mistakenly um, say that you've paid that contractor $10,000 when it was actually $1,000 because you, you put an extra zero, yep. in our records, we think that you paid him $10,000, yeah. but you've made an error in, in recording or reporting that amount. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, there's, there's both elements that we shouldn't, like, overlook is that um, both have um, responsibilities to each other. I'm intrigued, um, Marcus. Can you take us through exactly what information needs to go on that report? So the, the, the basic information is the, the, the name, uh, besides your own, inf- your own personal information, mm-hmm. in terms of your, your business and ABN and uh, things people will be familiar with, what we look for um, when you report on the contractor is the name, address, ABN, total amount paid for that year, including GST. Mm-hmm. So because TPRS is a, an annual obligation, um, we want the, the total amount that you've paid them. So, you know, a lot of businesses may use that same subby five times a year. Mm-hmm. So just report us the total amount that you've um, paid th- that contractor. So it's, yeah, that's basically the basic elements. So really simple, particularly if you've got an accounting system. It's not hard at all. It's just tick a box. Exactly. And if you don't have an accounting system, you know, we're looking after you. We've got uh, a digital form in in MyGov that when you're doing your tax return, it's right there as well. Mm. The ATO's got your back, tradies. (laughs) I'm pretty sure there's people listening to this going, what have you guys been smoking? (laughs) The ATO is not trying to help us. (laughs) They're making it as easy as they can. Yeah, yeah. But but I think you know th- there's a, a more uh, philosophical question or, or consideration in all of this is that you know we expect the government to do things we expect the government to do stuff about safety and we expect the government to have um, legislation to protect us from you know dodgy operators and and provide training records and all this sort of stuff uh, you know as as an industry the trades have. I suppose issues around, you know, the skills shortage and the government's trying to put money into some of those schemes. That money has to come from somewhere and it doesn't come from China. Uh, You know, it comes from Australian taxpayers. Mm. And, you know, if we shrink that taxpayer base by cheating the system, then there's less money to do all the stuff that we point the finger at the government and tell them to do. Uh, so I, I just feel like it's a, a bit of an ethical thing around. It's like, well, you know, if we all did our bit and, and if people stopped cheating the damn system, then, you know, there wouldn't be tax hikes mm. as much. You know, it's just, that's a lot of, you know, $50 billion. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Huge. That's a lot of tax you know, cuts that you guys could give us next and year. And it, it's, <laughs> it's probably worthwhile to mention as well to, for your, for your audience as well, is that, you know, about 95% of, uh, Australians do the right thing. Mm. So in terms of what we're talking about, in terms of uh, the tax of us trying to make it easier for you, that's what who we're targeting as well. Yeah. That people who are doing the right thing, make it easier for you. Mm. We know that you have a busy lives you know, trying to run a business. So we're, we're trying to encourage you to continue down that path. Mm. Cool. So Marcus, I have a question that I'm going to be interested to see the answer to this one or hear the answer to this one um, that I like to ask our guests. And the question is, if you had a thousand or maybe I should say, how many small businesses are there in Australia, Marcus? 
I can't remember off the top of my head, unfortunately. Okay, um, a lot. So I normally ask if you had a thousand uh, tradies in a room, but I should probably say, you know, if you had like forty thousand tradies in a room, perhaps. Uh, what's one piece of advice or one thing you would like to say to them? Uh, it's going to sound really simple, but uh, you know, we, I mentioned at the beginning is um, keep good records. Mm-hmm. Look after your business. You know, like. Um, Again, I'm an information junkie, right, by, by trade and just by personality. Mm. Um, the more information and correct that you have, it's, you know, the, the power's in your hands. Hmm. Yeah. We like that answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's an answer we give all the time. Yeah. I thought yeah, you were it's, saying. It's, it's funny because it's, um, it ends up to be reverse workflow for most people because mm. they think, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm not going to do it. But when you get into trouble or you need to do something, it's going to cause you more hassles and mm. longer time to actually uh, do that. Oh, so like true. I tell my kids, you study now, you don't have to worry worry about the exams. Yeah, <laughs> you guys have the exam without studying. Well, uh, Mark, it's been great chatting with you, mate. Um, and I, I didn't think I, I didn't think I'd get so fired up about our social obligation <laughs> of paying taxes. No, it's a first. <laughs> I'm sure. But uh, so, if you can just run through, perhaps if people are listening, you're to this la- going, sorry, you're <laughs> la- <laughs> that's all right. I'm, mate. I'm hearing, hearing every ten word, one in ten words. Oh, see, my wife does that to me on purpose sometimes. (laughs) So where where do people go to find out more about uh, the TPRS and their obligations under all this, Marcus? Uh, Yeah, go to the um, ATO website, ato.gov.au. You can search there or look um, backslash TPA and you'll have a a lot of information there, including examples, um, what to do if you don't think you need to lodge, um, you know, who needs to lodge, um, there's a lot of information to digest there. Fantastic. We'll add the link into the show notes. Awesome. Well, thanks again for your time, Marcus. And, uh, yeah, I hope you have a fantastic day and we look forward to seeing more people doing the right thing. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Have a great one. Well, I'm still awake. (laughs) Warwick. (laughs) Warwick. Where, Where am I? People are just really <laughs> rolling their eyes now. Thinking, Did they really do that a second Again, time? Again, yeah, it wasn't funny in the intro. And it's no, not funny in the outro. I thought it was hilarious in both. Sorry. Hey, uh, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, I I have a new respect for people who do the right thing. Yeah, I don't like people that rip off their mates. No, stop stealing from your mates. Mm-hmm. We're do, all mates, aren't we? Well, you know, tradies are meant to stick together. But mm. that's the thing. If, if you're doing that stuff... You're pinching from someone who's operating legitimately. You're stealing from their family. And honestly, you're just hurting yourself. You know, it's next time you go to an election and you bitch and moan about the fact that the government's not doing this or not spending money on that, guess where they could have got it from? All of us doing the right thing. Yeah, all it's of us easy. collectively. Just, just you know, Do being right. Australian. It's un-Australian to dodge tax. There you go. You know what is Australian, We're going to start though? a campaign. Don't, yeah, well, I don't think I think it might fall flat on our face, but, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll support you, Warren. Send the hate mail Because that's what a good Nicole business partner does. That. <laughs> yeah, go on, do that. Yeah, yeah. No one <laughs> sent us any hate mail, actually. We've never had hate mail. People just love us. And at Tradies and Business, we haven't even had a troll yet. We're unhateable. We had somebody laugh at us once during oh, yeah. a podcast. True. But we haven't had anyone <laughs> troll us. Anyway, you had something important to say, I think. Yeah, I was going to say that it's very Australian, if you're a tradie, to be part of the tradies and business community. That's Australian. Oh, nice, Coxie. Thank nice. you. That was, that was really cheesily done. I liked it. <laughs> what, where would I go if I wanted to join the tradies and business you community, Coxie? You would just Coxie? jump onto Facebook and you would search tradies and business and up will pop our page and then up will pop our group. And if you want to be like, what is it, 1,300, 1,400 yeah. other very cool trade business owners it? Owners, 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 <laughs> you will come and join us in the group. Yep. Um, there's some awesome problems being solved, people swapping information, uh, you know, what's Lots the best software to use, uh, how do I find a good bookkeeper, all sorts of questions getting answered for the big cost of free. What? It's free. And really? you also get access to Coxie and me for free Yep. if you join the group. You do? Um, 
And from there, you can also um, sign up to some of the other stuff that we flog you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool stuff with lots of value. Yeah, so you know, if you want more help, you can uh, check out the website. Um, you could even work one-on-one with me and Coxie mm-hmm. um, if you're mad enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got quite a group of people that are mad enough. <laughs> yes, we have a few mad buggers that are working we with do. us these days and um, getting some fantastic results. They are. But uh, if nothing else, go join the free group. It's a great community of tradespeople. And uh, we would love to see you in there asking questions and, and probably helping out your mates as well. So um, check it out, Facebook, Tradies in Business, or head on over to the website, tradiesinbusiness.com.au. We'll see you soon. hoo You've been listening to the Tradies in Business podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business, and other cool stuff at tradiesinbusiness.com.au.